Hi, everybody. Welcome to The New Normal. I'm your host, Lisa Davis, a.k.a. Light Queen Lisa. Today is Friday, so we remember everyone deployed by wearing something red, drinking out of something red, putting red lipstick on, I don't know, something red, because we want to remember everyone deployed um, on Fridays. So join us and jump in the live chat with um, all of our fam and friends on happy hour. They're already, already at it, spreading truth. We'll see you guys with Westwood right after this. Give us a like, share the video. I cannot wait to see you. I'm so excited. I'm right here. I know, but I mean physically, in oh. the flesh. Oh, yes. In the flesh, in mm. the flesh. Now, hey, when would that be? How are you? Can you hear us? Or you have a... Huh? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can I hear was you. just saying hi to Mitch. Oh. I didn't know if you could hear Angelina. us. There. Wave and hi, smile. Okay. What's so, up? What's up? <laughs> Mitchie's Motivational Mondays are back in action. I got to get them back in action. So, yes, I was sick. I was sick this past Monday. Okay. My cough was horrible. Yeah, you're good now. Um, <laughs> but I'm planning on doing one for this coming Monday. So. Okay, great. So you guys go check out Mitchie's Motivational Mondays next Monday. Now we'll hold him accountable. If he doesn't, you are allowed to Thank you. post yes. on that his will wall. Help me, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a hard time. Yeah, there's an eclipse and you know, there's like a blackout for Mitchie's Motivational Monday. But now it's back. <laughs> there you go. Now we're back. So have we had the shift? Um, CERN is supposedly turned on. I it was my understanding that the, the dude that was the, the the god particle Higson, he died the day of the eclipse. You know, with the you, you heard that, didn't you? No. Oh, the boson. What is the Hig, Higgs boson particle? They call it the god particle that they're looking for in CERN. The guy that invented that term. The guy that invented. He died that day on the died eclipse. That day. That day he died. Wow. Well, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No coincidence. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. I think it's Higgs. Higgs. Is it Higgs? The boson particle or something? Wow. Yeah. That yeah, it's crazy. crazy. I don't know. I don't search it up. Really exciting. Um, OJ's so, dead. Huh? OJ. OJ's oh, dead. He got, yeah, he got juiced. Yeah, yeah. I heard um, that he he made like his whole family sign NDAs before mm -hmm. they would come to see him on his deathbed. Yeah. Um, and then there's some weird recall on just his white Ford Bronco for fiery oh, leaks. Come on. come on. I'm not kidding. Oh, come on. I'm not kidding. It says the one he used in the chase or whatever. The yeah, AJ Cowling driving. Yeah. It's like 30 a, years ago, wasn't it? It's being recalled for fiery leaks. Just that one. I'm sure it's nothing. Must be a joke there somewhere. Must be. I mean, it's mm. just a joke. That's what it is. It's a joke. Okay. Um, a joke. I had a little moment of glory. Actually, it wasn't mine at all. It was, what a uh, I want to give proper kudos to who it was. The Public Awakening, who I know we all miss. I miss him. I still talk to him, but I miss him being on the show with me. I had so much fun doing comms with me. He like lit a fire in me about all that enough that it drives Westwood crazy. Um, but he sent me this video. This is a map of, is it sharing? I hope it's sharing. Oh, um, let me double check. Yes. Okay. Ventusky.com. Isn't that what it is? Ventusky. That's what it says. And so they can choose all these different things. Temperature, yeah. feels like temperature, precipitation, radar, satellite, clouds, blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah, they right. chose waves. And yes. If you go back and you can see this little calendar on the bottom starting Thursday. So Johnny and I talked about this briefly. And then I sent it to Uncle Cliff. And I was like, actually sent it to him before then but I posted um, it. I said you know public pay shared this with me like is this because it's is an Antarctic it thing real? yeah something launched off of Antarctica on is the 10th or right? on the 11th I can't remember on the 10th um and it's this 
burst of waves and it gets up to like 80 something here it says 83.7 feet high waves i saw that and then they go through this timeline so there's a i guess a prediction model in this map yeah. yep and it goes through till the 17th um, on the 16th it's mostly all in the atlantic ocean by the 17th it looks like it's coming into the U.S. When do I fly? <laughs> You'll be safe. You'll be just you have no there. idea what I'm going through. I know. I'm so, I'm so stressed. Can't sleep. I'm sorry. Anxiety. I don't want you to be stressed, but I can't wait to see you. See how you are. I'm super. Just want to see me. Make me fly. You're always, but think about it. every day you get out of bed, you're risking your life. Oh, I am risking my life every Friday night. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no doubt about that. Uh, you are. You uh. are. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so yeah. I'm curious. And, you know, all the, not all the, some of these billionaires were building these. All the young dudes. All right. I got to stop. We're going to get. Demonetized or whatever it is. That's okay. Copyright That's all right. I don't make any money off this anyway. All right, we're good. Um, if you guys want to support me, join my Patreon. Send me a message, um, and right. let me. Send some light me. going. <laughs> well, just join Patreon, and then we can talk, chat through yeah. that. So there you go. Um, whatever you need. Um, but this weekend is all about Mighty Mia coming up. Um, yes. Her birthday is on the fifteenth, which is Monday, but we're doing yep. her celebration on the twentieth. Um, cause we felt like that would work best for everybody and it's yeah, weekend in the weekend. Yeah. So we will be, I want to share with you guys. I've been working my tail off. Um, hold on, hold on. This is kind of the backside of the software, but what are um, we talking about? We got some hidden messaging here. You're working your tail off. We got the backside. What are we talking about? <laughs> no. Oh, well, what are you trying to do here? This is not a, uh, hash it out episode. Oh, I'm not okay. sending comms. About yeah, mermaids. Okay. Um, but anyway, we Speaking have tale. amazing stuff. And in the description of the video on YouTube, there are links to buy a ticket to join us at the event. There's, um, which also then we'll send you all the information about, um, well, the free event is Friday night on um, at Edmond Rail Yard, uh, downtown Edmond. And it's not a big downtown. It's like a little town. <laughs> and now I can deal with little towns. Yeah, it's going to be little fun. downtown. I can do that. I yeah, whoever's this. there, we're glad to see you. And we want to talk about freedom and uh, family and connections and like opting out of this corrupt financial system. Um, but this is a list of we have 17 items so far. Daddy O sent me this really cool. Um, Whiskey barrel stave. Oh, huh? saying that right? Yeah, that's what uh, you got. Yeah, and it says Litecoin on it, and only eighty-four million. And anyway, he really made it cool. Um, we have, got a got the bid on it. Five X Beaver Stetson hat, uh, seven and three eighths size, donated by Thrand. Thank you. Um, I threw in my pickleball paddle that I won from uh, Coin Vigilante's mom. Um, oh yeah. Because I've never played pickleball, but I won it. And I hear a lot of people get injured playing pickleball. Injured? Yeah, there's a lot of pickleball injuries. Oh. Look it up. Interesting. Um, Mom, uh, Crypto Nana for LTC donated a Coin Vigilante Bitcoin watch. Mm. The Davises will be giving away one very token. And let's see. We have a helium miner up for auction. We've got oh, nice. a picture of... The one and only Westwood on the Digibyte scooter. I got to remember to bring that, don't I? Yep. Yes, you do. And, and if you have a picture of us together, I don't know if you have any of those. Oh, yeah, I probably do. Okay. Yeah, then we can bring... sign one of those. and That one. Here. That one's this, a real one. I want to show everybody this because there is this huge thing that Tom donated. And it didn't get sold last year, but it is really awesome. And it's the cat. Like this, Dwight Clark going like this. Okay. Joe Montana on the tiptoes. 
as big as me mostly. Like it's really big. Okay, that's about as long as I can hold that up. Talking about Joe Montagna. Yeah. Tony Montagna. Huge, huge. Um. Okay, let me make sure I'm putting this carefully. Look at that I office. That. I got to put it back where it was. Come on. Okay. Um, it's got like a card and it has them signing it and the pictures of the, the famous catch, um, yes. which I really appreciate that. So Still Montana did Dwight Clark. Yeah, I love San Francisco 49ers. Um, back the, when I used to like them. You did? Yeah, I like the 49ers back then. I like Joe Montana. Oh. I don't care for him so it's much about anymore. Like gold or whatever. Well, 49 um, from San Francisco, the gold, 1849. Yeah, right, and yeah. thank you, Ron, for buying tickets um, to the event. I really appreciate it, and Gloria's donation as well. Thank you so much, Gloria. There's a there's a one ounce silver. I should have it out here. I don't know why I didn't bring it out. Oh, that's um, good. I sent you pictures. Oh, from um, mom and dad. Yeah, one ounce silver Bitcoin rocket. It's like one of five thousand. It's got a little Bitcoin symbol on it. It's a rocket with like apes all over it going to the moon. Nice little collector box. Yes. I'll be bringing it personally. Okay. It's never been at the bar, so it's never been smoked around. I'll use those pictures and. Um, oh. I should have brought it out. I don't know why I didn't bring it out. Oh God, that's scary. Because I don't want to get smoke on it. That's why. What's wrong? Is it not working? No, I'm just trying to find the... Um... Is it too high? Too hot? Okay. All right, try this. Donation from mom. Goes. There it is. And dad. It is a Bitcoin rocket. Yeah. Oh, gosh, my phone is jumping around. Oh, I know. Sorry. It's no, no, no. Cool. It's good. I, I can download them and then... Um, I can download all those pictures okay. and put it on the auction site. So right now, the link is live. Um, on the auction site, so you could go check out all the items. Um, you can buy a t-shirt as Dang, well. I gotta buy a t-shirt. Freaking forgot. The t-shirts are really When's cool. When does that end? Do what? When does the t-shirt thing end? The date? It ends on the 15th. That's okay, the last Okay, so this weekend. Get it this weekend. Remind yeah, myself. Yeah, you have to weekend. get it this weekend or it's done. And I just did that because um, if you don't, then... It's going to take forever for them because they you have to buy them and then they ship them. And so mm -hmm. that gets you your T-shirt by May 1st. So I felt like that was reasonable. May Day. So as you're dancing around the Maypole, you can do it in your new T-shirt. Yeah. These are the T-shirts. Um, we did Be a Hero, Team Mighty Superhero. So um, we've sold 19 shirts so far. Thank you to everybody who bought a shirt. Right. And... Um, Appreciate you, and please go buy some more shirts. I just did twenty dollars, so um, that I felt like was. I know everybody's yeah. in a tight spot right now, and that gives us a little bit of twenty dollar bill. Yeah, and then we can give that money to Mighty Miller, who is a little boy who is fighting cancer right now and is our champion, um, or maybe he's our warrior. I have it backwards, I think. But either way, we're celebrating him and fundraising to uh, get some money to help their family because he's having to travel from Oklahoma to Tennessee for treatment. And it's very expensive. And they have um, moms had to stop working and all of that stuff. So we want to help them. I think that's all of my Team Mighty announcements. Get your shirt, sign up for the live auction. The links are in the description and buy a ticket or make a donation on the ticket webpage if you can, any dollar amount. So buy all that gear, bid it up. Come on, bid it up. Let's mm -hmm. bid it up. Am I hearing, am I coming through okay? All right. Got my sound guy over here helping me out. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. You, heard, you heard me? I heard As you. Blind Dave says, heard you heard me? Yeah. Okay. So they're getting caught up on the... And then Uncle Cliff, I sent it to Uncle Cliff. He retweeted it and said it comes from Antarctica. So I think that's in his data um, about the wave. And this, not this kind of wave. Oh. No. Okay. Um, and then 
There's also something that I saw today about Brazil having a, where is it? I, I reposted it under Uncle Cliff's thing, but now it's going to be impossible oh. to find. Um, no, I was drinking tequila. Did I, send I hear it, you. did I send it to you in messages? I don't know. Like I did. Sorry, I'm all out of sorts here. Okay. I'm just interrupting and ruining the show. Just, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna going on my own little path here. You're okay. <sighs> Sorry. You're good. You're good. Um so what are your thoughts on oh you're gonna make a drink? He's making Oh, a drink. it's done. You poured it over the rocks. Back. Okay. Done deal. Drinking to kill you tonight. Okay. Oh wow. We went into uh, today's like the uh, family day out, you know, so we go out and do stuff. And, you know, anyway, so we went into the Metamora thrift store, you know, the one, I don't even think you were in there or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So we went in there and um, as we're walking out, I look over to where the clothes are, you know, my wife and daughter are walking out. And I said, look, 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 somebody has been drinking tequila. In Metamora? Well, that's what I said. And then she looks at me, she's like. She says, oh, because the clothes fell off. Because there was a bra on the floor. Get it? There was a bra on the floor. And so I said, look, somebody's been drinking tequila. And then she's like, what? And then she got it. She's like, oh, because the clothes fell off. Okay, I get it. That, ha that actually happened. So. What's that one okay. song? One tequila, two tequila, it was three funny tequila, there. You know, it's like Tequila makes her clothes fall off. You know, because there's a bra on the ground. And anyway, anyway. And that's oh, just exactly, and that inspired you to drink tequila tonight. Yeah, so I figured oh, I'm gonna drink some tequila. <laughs> awesome. I already got my flip flops on and no socks, so you know I'm I'm already on my way. It's officially spring. Forget yeah. Punxsutawney Phil. It's when Westwood puts his flip flops on. Speaking of that, on the way home, mm -hmm. we're like something's in the road. There's a little groundhog in the road, so my wife slows way down, and then he just. Oh, good. He was alive. He could have been killed. Mm -hmm. Good thing I spotted him. Groundhog. So, um, yeah, there's that. It looks like uh, the temperature next week in Oklahoma. I was looking. I'm thinking, looks a little chilly. No. Well, They're well. saying it's going to be like 80. Next weekend? I think so. Lord, go They're check telling it us tornado. Oh, maybe they were talking about this weekend. They said. Lord, go check it again. Tornadoes. It's going to be 85 here Sunday. And then I look at, oh, Oklahoma City should be nice and warm next weekend. Oh, oh yeah. Can't even wear flip-flops. We'll bring oh, my sweatshirt. Not that cold. So it will be 90 by Sunday of this weekend. Yeah, then and then the I fly in Thursday. And what happens Thursday? You bring the cold wind with you. I bring the cold wind. 74 is a high on Thursday. <laughs> Friday is 61. Mm -hmm. Saturday is 58. Mm -hmm. You love 50 or 60 degrees, though. Oh, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm good with it. So the coldest it gets is well that, five. right now that. <laughs> Bringing the chill with me. You are, yep. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but they're worried about. Um, but I'm so warm. Well, it's yeah. Okay. Well, there won't be any tornadoes in that kind of temperature. No, so we're good. Really we're good next weekend. Yeah. See. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! I don't know. Ask me anything. This is uh, ask me anything Friday. Autographed it. I don't know. I can't read the autographs. I'm guessing Montana and Clark autographed it. I don't know. The yeah, somebody Clark, and then Montana autographed on the 16, and Clark autographed on the seven on the 87, and he drew like the plan of how they their little football plan. Yeah, it was the yeah the play. Yeah, oh, the, the play. The so play. Yeah. play. The play. Um, interest rates stayed the same okay. this week. I heard that's because the Fed is dead. But who knows? Could be. Could Can't be. do anything. I mean, I just looked before I got on because I'm curious because the housing housing's in trouble. I would think. I mean, with these rates being as high as they are, and I know historically they're not that high, but. When you're used to what two and a half percent rates, and now they're seven, makes it a little difficult to go out and get yourself a house. 
Um, but yeah, I looked, it was 7% at the credit union here uh, today. 7% for a 30 year, 7% for a 20 year and six and a half for a 15 year. I mean, doesn't look like it's coming down anytime soon. But it also gives a false sense of, I was talking with a friend of mine today about this with the interest rates so high. Yeah. That should bring housing prices down because, mm -hmm. but Good. like BlackRock and <clears throat> Zillow, or maybe I BlackRock owns Zillow. I don't even know all that. I heard bought up a lot of the market to hyper, like to inflate. Sure. The because they've got home. money to do it. And it's, it's like, they've got cash. They can, they don't care about interest rates. It doesn't matter. They can just go out and buy property. Doesn't matter. Keep it sitting in, you know, in cold storage, so to speak. And guess what? When you've got a bunch of people coming over illegally into the country and need a place to stay, the government makes a contract with these corporations and says, hey, you guys can come live in these houses that we got ready for you to go, but everybody else can't buy them. We're just going to do some government handout program. I don't know that that's happening, but you know, mm -hmm. I can see that happening. Interesting. You know? That's an interesting thought. Yeah, you um, know. Yeah, I heard there were Biden has flown 404,000 404, illegals and placed them like all over the country. The Sanders was complaining about it because he flew in. That was some ridiculous number. He flew into Miami. I don't know how many thousands there were. Just fly, flies them in. Don't tell anybody. He's land here. They land in it Miami. And like, okay, figure it out. Figure it out. I think I posted a breakdown of the numbers of people. I don't on know what the numbers are. Telegram. If you want to join the team, mighty, yeah, here it is. <clears throat> um, let's see. Flying over the border, this population of 404,000 is not included in the southern border numbers. Oh, okay, so this is different. They've been, these were ones that were flown directly to the U.S. under Biden's HCNV parole program for Cubans. Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans, which grants the recipient two years of humanitarian parole. What the hell is that? In the U.S. and allows them to apply to work. The flights are not taxpayer funded. Bullshit. Well, who's paying for it then? Yeah. Well, it's corporate funded, which is probably, you know, government funded, which basically you're paying for it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Um, okay, so the breakdown, they go into like which country they're from, but who really cares? Um, so that's on top of not including the southern border numbers. That's in addition to. That's crazy. That is crazy. Cray cray. I mean, we'll see what happens. Well, and so when's the next census? Because that's what Elon was saying. It's, like that. Years. it's supposed to be like at, at the, in the round you hear, you know, like 2020, 2030, 2040. It's supposed oh, to be okay. every 10 years. So, I mean, we got six years to clean it up, I guess. So we shouldn't have an adjustment then in the. Um, oh. No, I don't think so. Because, yeah, because the census doesn't. I don't know what happened in 2020 with the census, though, given the whole pandemic thing. You know, mm. did that get taken correctly or did it? Get, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Little dog getting cozy over here. <laughs> Got the pups with Yeah, him. I'm not sure. I don't know. Somebody needs to do a little research on that one. Yeah, so somebody, uh, okay, Dana. Dana, am I going to say your name right? Dana Frelak or Freelack? Frelak? Dana Frelak. Talking about copper, silver, and gold. Yeah, absolutely. That's starting to move. I mean, those metals are starting to push up now, finally. People are realizing it. Uh, we talked about it last night a little bit. Costco selling out of uh, silver bars and uh, and gold. Um, you know, you're bringing it to retail, and you, know, you think about it. Retail really, they might want to get some, but they don't know how to get some. And what right. are they going to do? They're going to go buy an ETF, and it's like, yeah, but there's... Once they get it in their hands, you know how it is. Once you feel gold and silver in your hand, you're like, oh, yeah, I want, I want this. You know, I want somebody else holding this. And then there's that magical, mystical quality about I it. I love giving, it, um, giving silver to kids, children, oh, yeah. because they respond to it. And yep. they, they know it's something valuable. And they, they, they want to keep it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's different than handing them a paper or bill or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, how can I spend this and how fast can I spend yeah. it? Yeah. You know? They want to keep it. But yeah, when they have that, it's it's you know it's a tangible thing, and uh, you're getting it into um, a market, Costco, for instance, to people who ordinarily aren't going to go to a coin store. You know what I mean? They're not going to go to the local coin dealer because they're intimidated. They're like, I don't even know what to buy. Went to the coin show a couple of weeks ago, and I saw a guy. I was actually listening into a guy. He's like, 
hey, I don't know what I really, I kind of think I know what I want to get. Basically, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. I got two kids that I want to buy, you know, equal amounts for. And I was thinking, you know, maybe a half an ounce of gold and a bar of silver for each one, you know. And see, so you've got people thinking about, you know, those things. And, but most people, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an intimidating thing to walk into a coin show. You know what I mean? I mean, if you've I never don't know. been. I've never been. Yeah, so exactly. So I mean, it's just, you don't even know where to begin. There's but so yeah, much. it's like, it's, to me, that's like the true free market. But the people that are willing to pay for a booth, so they have an expense, mm -hmm. they're yep. there with their time. Yep. Then on top of it, they that's they know the value of oh, yeah. their assets. They know what it's worth. So you're not, it's no uh, garage sale deal no. there. No. Like you're going there to pay no. market price. Yeah, you're going to pay a price. And yeah, there's a little wiggle room on some stuff, depending upon what they paid for it. But you're not going to get, you know, silver because it says it's $29 an ounce. You're not going to get it for $28 an ounce. Right. Just because that guy bought it for $20 an ounce. It's just not the way it works. Yeah, it doesn't matter what he no, bought it for. It doesn't matter. It's what you bought it. Price. Or what his value, you know, against the deflate or an inflating dollar. Um, so, I mean, but it is intimidating to people. So when you see it in the retail market, though, it makes it more palatable to your everyday, you know, retail person that hasn't ever bought it or held it and they see it at a place like Costco and they're like, well, shoot, maybe I'll pick some of that up. And they've been picking it up. I mean, they've been buying it and they're selling them out. Yeah. I think I read something like 200 million a month or something. Can that be right? I don't know. Whatever they're getting in, they're selling. Yeah. So. I read something about it. Um, Lots of good stuff. Here is this that is one more thing before we move along from the Antarctic wave that's going to possibly oh, yeah, yeah. Hit. by the time it hits the East Coast, it hits the entire East Coast. Just so you know, this is not just New York or just Florida or whatever. It's showing it hitting the entire East Coast. And I heard a guy one time that said, all you have to do to knock out the entire power grid of the US, you only have to take out six or nine stations well, that's probably right um, and so if that something like that were to happen surely there would be six or nine stations taken out but then i also saw this today where it shows um something happening because people were like oh nothing's happening in africa whatever i don't know somebody commented and but this is saying that in brazil or coast of chile i'm sorry chile. Um, at least two thousand meters dropped we don't know what's causing this buoy to go into invent mode. Could be sinking maybe, but that would be odd right now. It's unknown. So if for a wave to come up somewhere, a wave must go down somewhere else, right? You would think it would equal. I don't know. I mean, I would think it would equalize somehow. You know what I mean? I don't know. And then it said, uh, I don't know if the earth is flat or round, to be honest with you. So I can't tell <laughs> you. I really don't know. They said the coast of Chile is on watch for a very large earthquake in this week's forecast. Um, so I thought that was interesting. I guess if it is flat, that would happen. You know, it's just like in a bowl. You know, you like create the wave this way. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I saw something about that. I think I put the right link in the chat. Ventusky.com is where you're looking That's at this. this you can see all the all the wind stuff. Yeah. And you can go the all waves. over the world and see the waves, the winds, the temperatures, and you can look at all this stuff. And so, yeah, I did watch that. I did look at that and it looked like massive freaking waves right there. And some people said that it could be the meteor hit and cause this, whoosh, you know, gushing all of a sudden and nobody's talking about it. It could be a glitch in the software. I mean, who knows what it is, but it was on there for a few images. I know that quite a few. Yes. Could the meteor have hit in Brazil and that's why they were doing the big Twitter blackout? I mean, well, just judging from that map, probably not. It was probably but more in Africa. It looked, it looked way south and like can't kind of from Antarctica, you know, maybe pushed or south south there. or South Africa area, you know, in there. And I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say what that is and why that showed up, or why it's saying that they're 80 foot waves and you know, that area, but I <laughs> I need. Mean, where's the live cams? Where's where's all? I don't know. Where's there the too many at? people in Antarctica? But yeah. yeah, well, that's all government stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
other things. Other things. Yeah, but the buoy, I saw somebody mention something about it. They do like uh, the buoys, and that's just, I don't know anything about it. They do some sort of deep test every so often, and it drops, and I don't freaking know. And it might be a normal thing. I have no idea, again. I just, I'm not a I'm not an ancient mariner like Samuel Taylor Coleridge writes about. I do have an albatross, though. And her name is Lisa. <laughs> <clears throat> she drags you around. All not at all. No. Drags no. you around. No, you're not. Um, yeah. You're it's you're a very I, interesting. A beautiful. I can't even think. Of, I don't want to say a swan. I'm thinking of a beautiful dove. <laughs> <Black> <laughs> <swan> <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't even open the can up. I love it. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, oh, I lost you. Where'd you go? Um, yeah, so the, I thought that was really interesting. <clears throat> um, I shared that as well on Telegram. And thanks to everybody who's sharing information on the Telegram group uh, for Team Mighty. I feel like that's like our freedom fam. Um, so if you guys have information that you can share, I know Tom and Jim um, are really great at sharing information there and some other people. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm just oh. looking at the chat. Sorry. So, yeah, I, no, you're good looking at the chat. <clears throat> so, uh, apparently, Mike Johnson is a traitor. Did you see ooh, all that? What now? Oh, the Speaker of the House? Speaker of the House voted. Wait, with wait, wait, wait. He's a traitor, as in stocks, or a traitor? I believe it's the one with the OR. Okay. The yeah. Um, he, yeah. so they were, you know, doing their little side hustle talk fast, whatever thing. No bait and switch stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hold on. Share this tab instead. But am I sharing? I don't think I am because I don't think I'm sharing. Can't trust those people with big glasses. I don't know what it is. I know. Like big glasses. <laughs> so Speaker Johnson unveils new bill by House to ensure illegals cannot vote. Oh, that's not even it. That's the wrong one. Um, there was, it's about the FISA. Well, here's Dan oh. Crenshaw's version. This is ridiculous. More reforms. It would, it would, this is before queries are even made. It would put in criminal penalties for those who do not abide by those processes. The FBI hates these reforms, Liar. by the way. Please support this bill. Please do not support the amendment to require a warrant for queries. Any of That's that little part. You know when they do those drug commercials and they go, oh, this is so wonderful, whatever. And they go, and then uh, it might kill you and make you blind permanently and blah, 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 really fast where he's like, please do not support the one that, cr that uh, demands warrants because right now they do not need a warrant to spy on Americans. No, they just need people. There's a few people to sign off a on few people to sign off on. And that's what they did to Trump. And that's what, they're, to be honest, that's what they're doing to all of us all the time. Sure with information. Absolutely. We put out there. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, why, why would we need a warrant? We only had a revolution over such a thing, you know, and put it in a, the Bill of Rights in the Constitution for the new nation. Why it's would we need warrants? Literally unconstitutional. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene was speaking earlier this morning and said, you know, why is it the American people should know that you guys know that this is illegal, immoral? I don't even know what all she said, but she said, um, because there are holdouts for, for Congress. So this FISA and these rules can be used on all of us, but not on any of them. Because they have already worked in holdouts that these rules don't apply to them. I wonder how many other bills they've passed that they said, you all know what? Let's do this to we the people, but we get a holdout. This yeah, we've got a different Congress. medical system. we got a different pension system. <laughs> We can, uh, you know, trade stocks, you know, insider trading. It's okay. They get yep. to do all the other things that, you know, is illegal for all of us. And, Literally you know, not, rules for thee. Yeah, pretty much. Again, if you see one of your congressmen trying to have a nice steak dinner tonight at a fancy restaurant, maybe you shouldn't uh, let him have such a nice dinner. Just saying. Well, and even these ones that you thought were like the way Dan Crenshaw said that. I used to be a big Dan Crenshaw fan. I thought yeah. he was wonderful. He's, you know, military. Yeah. Um, he's serving still, you know, all this. Mm -hmm. And then you start watching the traitor side come out. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the devil lies to you. Oh, here's the truth. 
with a little side of lie. It's like it makes the hey, whole thing a lie. Rat poison is 99.9% .9 okay. It's just that small fraction of poison that gets you. You know, most of it's fine. Yeah. It's just that little bit, you know, that will kill you. Yeah. Um, I also watched a Kim Clemente prophecy video. I love Kim Clemente. I know God rest his soul. And um, I'm glad that his family's still doing his work and sharing his videos and all of that. But he said there's a traitor in the White House and that they will, let's see, how do you say it? Something about cutting the head off the snake. And then once that happens, the people will be freed and that will like rain down God's blessings on his people. But that we have to go through this ugly, terrible, scary time. And then the traitor is revealed. Um, and you know, when I'm seeing Trump talk about Israel and all that, that's really concerning. Yeah. And there was um, that nervous clip of watch. So the reason that I had this clip up before is because Trump is standing behind Speaker Johnson and he does not look happy with him. And he looks point at him. He does this. Look out. Did he do that? I, I don't remember. know if he does. Look out. Yeah, if he says he's shot, They're that's terrible. bad. Um, so you. this is a new bill by House Republicans. And he's talking about to make us the same as every other democracy around the world, which we're not a democracy. Correct. Then we're he a form, says, a form of democracy, but we're not a democracy. Right. No, but this, well, I'll play it because it's short. I want everybody to hear this. Then he says, um, he's very nervous in it. You can tell talking about for, will be a democracy like every other country around the world. And then he says, oh, crap, we'll just play it. I can't just play the tape. <laughs> to require play the every tape. single person registers to vote in a federal election must prove that they're an American citizen first. They have to prove it. That will be a new that sounds uh, like uh, Haley. part Nikki of the Haley federal law and a very important everybody. Our bill will establish new safeguards. It'll put us on par, by the way, with virtually every other democracy around the world that also prohibits non-citizen voting. And, and this is a, a, a critical thing for us to do at a, at a very critical time. Our bill also will require states to remove non-citizens from their existing voter rolls. That's a big problem, too. Okay. Remove and, and it will provide access to databases. Okay, wait. This is the other thing. Well, maybe I should just let it play and then tell you. But th when he says remove non-citizens, would you be a citizen if you held... A, um, if you had citizenship in, if you had dual citizenship. And there's a lot of them that do. I heard all of Congress has yeah, a dual and it's usually citizenship with, like with like one Israel. One state in the Middle East that they're dual citizens of. Yeah, I heard with Israel. Yeah, from the one. Department of Homeland Security and the Social Security Administration to help the states administer this. At, 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 as the entity that is responsible. For regulating federal elections, Congress has this responsibility. We cannot wait for widespread fraud to occur, uh, to occur uh, especially when the Hard threat of fraud is growing with every single illegal immigrant that crosses that border. This is something most you Americans are deeply concerned illegal. about. The latest poll says 78% of the Americans who are polled say that preventing illegal immigrants from voting in our elections is a top priority. Uh, in every place I've gone around the country, whether it's out west, Midwest, Long Island, Deep South, it doesn't matter. Everybody is concerned about this. We have a job to do. Here's what you need to look for, and I'll turn it back to the president. The president. When we put this bill on the floor, you're going to see a record vote by Republicans and Democrats. You'll see that the Republicans stand for election integrity. And then we'll be able to ask this very important question. But the Democrats, they're going to have to go on record. Do you believe the, the, that Americans and Americans alone should be the ones who vote in American elections? We're about to find out their answer. And I think that will be a very interesting one uh, for, for everybody to see. Okay, remember that our election process is is overseen by Congress. It Remember, they had to, what was it, validate or what was it? They certify the election in 2020. Certify the election. I mean, they could have said right then, ah, we got a problem. Let's throw this back. But they didn't do it. They had an opportunity then. They've got the power to do it now. 
It's not the votes. It's who counts the votes. Right. Right. I mean, I don't know. You know, here's the problem I have with this stuff. You know, it's going to get all kinds of language obfuscation of what's this, what's that. And you get into that whole citizen thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that opens up that can of worms. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, I don't know. I mean, if you got electronic voting, I don't think it really matters. I mean, you can pass all the legislation you want, but if I mean, you know, if it's can, if you've got machines that are connected to the internet, and that's been proven in many cases that yeah, it's online. Okay, anything can be hacked. I mean, anything can be controlled. Look at the private companies that run these things and the people who are in charge of it, and look at connections. I mean, like you don't think that I mean some shenanigans can happen. I mean, I don't yeah. know. Which I, there's got you got to get back to. Some sort of, or maybe it's just hand count the votes. Maybe it's just paper vo votes and that's it, you know, or ID everybody. You know, I, got, I don't have a problem with that, you know, showing and validating. It's like, okay, that's one vote. It gets logged. You can't vote again. Okay. I, I wanted to talk to you about this because so in, it's my understanding that in the beginning of our country, <clears throat> before the Fed was created and all this corruption with our energy and money system, but like that actually George Washington's wife could, Oh, thank you for those beautiful balloons. Whoever did that. That's weird. Um, I never had that. Roll that beautiful balloon footage. Um, they, the, um, now I'm so distracted, but anyway, so they, George Washington's wife was able to vote oh, because she was a landowner and actually George wasn't. <clears throat> so do we go back to something like that? Like, because I just recently had this experience in my own town, my little town that we live outside of Oklahoma City, and it's like a suburb. And the council for the town went to a young entrepreneur's meeting and listened to them all bitch that they can't afford to buy a house here. Right. And so they Not anywhere decided, else for that matter. Yeah. So they're like, well, we they brought in some group from Kansas or somewhere decided that by themselves paid them a million dollars or something crazy to hold a um, roll call or a vote or whatever. But it was very biased. Like they went to events that young people were at. They went to like, yeah, right. they weren't asking the easiest like, thing they could do is send everyone who has a water bill or that you send a tax bill to for property tax and say, here's a survey right please vote not go ask these people that they don't pay the taxes in this town they don't live in this town but they're so worried about their opinion um and it's the same kind of thing to me no i get it you know do you have skin in the game and i mean yeah, right. that kind of that kind of thing it reminds me of you know went around on x twitter this this week to where some guy did an interview and, you know, these are the top five reasons, you know, or whatever it is, you know, regrets that you have, you know, so he interviews all these older people that are like 70 plus and, you know, ask what's their biggest regret in life? What would they do? What would you, what advice would you give to someone younger, to your younger self, you know, to do that, you know, you didn't do. And all of them are like, Oh, money's not important. We wish we would have spent more time with family, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But you're asking, obviously you're at a beach that's well off right. all these older people that have already made it and money is not an object not anymore because yeah. they made it but now they're saying money doesn't matter and it's like i mean yeah. it matters a hell of a lot when you're 20 years old and you're struggling and you're on your own trying to make things work i mean money's when kind you're of 75 or 80 and you can't make yeah when you got like five years left maybe still. and you're like oh, money's not important right. anymore i got my house well, paid and, off and and I'm on the beach. People, like the elderly right now not to call them the elderly. That's not a derogatory. Well, term. I'm sorry if I'm offending older. anybody. But I'm just thinking of people that have retired and that are in yeah. their later years and they thought they had enough to get them by. And all of a sudden, eggs cost three times the amount. Well, they didn't save yeah. three times the amount. So they're no. wondering, like, am I going to expire before I have to buy more eggs? I mean, that is theft, but the most cruel taxation. Uh, taxation yeah. without representation. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's that's where we're at. I mean, it's the same thing. Again, it does not matter how high that rate is. You know, it's they're going to print it. They're going to create it. And it's going to rob you of your energy because it's inflationary. When you create a bunch of money, it goes somewhere. It goes into housing. 
It goes into eggs. It goes into all these things that you need in life. That's what happens. And if you don't make enough, because you're usually behind the curve, you don't realize mm -hmm. it until the tsunami hits you. And then you're, you know, you union and you comes out and starts striking and this and that. Hey, we need to get, you know, caught up. And then, you know, and then they print off another five trillion. And then, okay, now we're behind and we're in a three year contract and we're falling behind again. And it's just, as long as you've got a broken economic system that is a Ponzi scheme, you know, where they can create money out of nothing and every dollar that comes into existence has debt attached, you got to create more money to pay off the existing debt. And when interest rates are higher, that means there's more debt that the government has to pay off. And so, you know, more of that money and that energy goes to pay off debt. And where's that debt money go? It's not going to us. We're not getting paid. I saw today Larry Fink, uh, for BlackRock guy, mm -hmm. you know, they have $10.5 trillion, T, trillion dollars ass in assets under management. And he said over the last 18 months, it's gone up $1.5 trillion. And it, it's just like, you know, it's fine for some people, I guess, you know. You know, if you're in that system, but most people, they just want to go to work and get, you know, do their thing. And, you know, they think they're doing the right thing. And, you know, I pay my fair share and, you know, you lose, you just lose. Well, and I was talking to another friend today and he said, you know, I have this ranch and it's worth millions of dollars. Well, and he said, but if I sell it, I'm yeah. buying dollars that are losing value. Right. And he's like, oh but God. I don't I don't want or need all this land right now. Right. Well, what else am I going to do with it? What, what am, am I going to do with mine? it? And if I keep it, guess what? He said, it was never mine because if I don't pay the taxes on it every year at so these millions of dollars, they, it doesn't matter how much I didn't pay. I could not pay one year's tax or Just five year. years or 10 years, however many years. And they will come take my multi-million dollar ranch. Yeah. You could have paid that. it off 30 years ago. Yeah. hundred years ago and it got passed down. And then, so you paid for it multiple times over every year. Every time you send that bill in one time, you don't, they're showing up with the posse taking it. I mean, that's, you know, and you think that's freedom, you know, people think that's okay. No, I don't think so. You know, that's got to give at some point, hopefully soon. Don't let them eat their steak dinners. Don't make them, no. don't let them be comfortable. Yeah, it's really interesting. I'm not sure which yeah. link Not a FOMO is sharing. Um, I think it's his. Is it your pinned tweet? Because I can't click on it while I'm in the. So I just went. Is it on it. Twitter? Is it where are we looking at? He's posting it in the chat, but I'm not sure which oh. status it is. But it says 1778. Yeah, really. So. I can't tell which one. I'm trying to find it. I don't see it. Um, he usually has good information for us. So. Oh yeah, he's got a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, lots of great info. <sighs> Hold on, maybe he's commented. And told me which. It's attached to comments on your. I know, but I can't see it. I can't access it. I can't. The way the software works, I can't go to it, but I can go to your th thread, so I don't know what it's about. Yeah, I mean, there are tools out there. There are people out there doing um, doing you. great research on, you know, how do you opt out of it and, you know, choose to... Okay, you think about it this way. You have people coming over the border who are not citizens of the corporation, you know, called the United States, um, and they you know, don't need an ID get all kinds of things and you ask yourself, well, well, how is that? Why am I a citizen? Why am I, why am I obligating myself and volunteering into this, this, this craziness? Do I really not need to do that? Maybe you don't. There's a lot of people out there doing research on uh, maybe you don't really want to be a citizen because what you think is a citizen is not really what you think it is. It's a language uh, obfuscation. And um, I don't know, do your research on that stuff, I guess. But it's absurd to think that you live in a free country and the land that you have, that you own, think you own, that they can just come take it. I mean, because you don't pay mm -hmm. the mafia their envelope every you know year in this case. I mean, and then I look at the jobs that get created. Most of the jobs are in government and the service industry. Very few manufacturing jobs, very few real jobs. It's always jobs that 
or overhead, essentially, that somebody else is paying for. Uh, it's just like a completely unsustainable system. I mean, the, somebody needs to go in there and break it. That's really what it comes down to. And gut government, and just completely, just 90% of it just gone. Get rid of all these agencies. Get rid of all this crap, all this fat. Bring all the soldiers home. Shut down all the bases. And that's it. Done. I don't know, that's how I feel about it. But, you know. There it is. Use land patents to secure a loyal title of land. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a land great. patent right there. The original land patent hanging on the wall for this property right here. That's wonderful. But there's such, so how much education did that take for you? And how difficult was it to find that information? Well, you got to know where to go. Certainly not nobody through the escrow it. process. Nobody teaches it. I mean, I can't remember the guy's name that, that was real big on that. Um, I'd have to look it up. He does a lot of lectures on it. It's not David Strait. I mean, he does that stuff, but it's somebody else. And essentially, you can, if you know, because you can go and look at your, uh, go look at the deed, you know, to the property. It usually has, you know, on the deed to your property, it has like the meets and bounds, they call it. You know, that's not necessarily it, but it's got the dimensions of the property. Um, you can go get it at the courthouse in the county, look it up, do some research, and you can go back and look at the original land patent. And in this case, this was uh, um, this land patent for this particular property. Somebody, I think it was, uh, I don't care where he's from. I'd have to go look at it. Um, but it was bought directly from the U.S. government. Directly from the U.S. government, your heirs, the successors, it's yours for eternity and perpetuity. And mm -hmm. then you, you've got that document that shows that. And then you got to say, okay, when did it change hands? You do all the research, all the all the titles, all the deeds that changed hands up to you at that point, and that's the process of doing it. Now, once you know the boundaries and you know where your land is, you can go to the Bureau of Land Management, and you can go to their website, and you got a map, and then you can go in there and look at it, and you can see where the original land patent from the government, in most cases, that was where it was purchased. And you can order it, and they'll send it to you real cheap. And then you've got that original document that's stamped, and you can say, okay, this is where it started. And then you can do your research from there, and that's the process of getting the allodial title. Now, you can do all this. You can put the county on notice. You can post it in the courthouse, you know, in a public record and say, hey, listen, I'm done. I'm not playing this game anymore. Does it necessarily mean that the sheriff won't come up and try and take it if you don't pay, you know, your, your little <coughs> tax bill? That's not necessarily thing. a guarantee because, I mean, they're living in a – an alternate reality to where their pensions are in that alternate reality and they're following orders they think the sheriff should follow the orders of the people because he's directly elected however if the people aren't awake enough and if now listen if everybody in the county said no this is the way it's going to be you know, well what's the sheriff going to do you know so dana's saying which this is along the lines of what you're saying um quit paying taxes quit paying insurance yeah, if everybody stopped doing it I read 36,000 people did not renew their driver license in New York. And you say, you no, need a license. What are you going to do about it? It's literally protected in the Constitution is your ability to travel. That's liberty. Absolutely. So why are we asking permission from it, people it, that it, don't have policy. power? They're enforcing policy. They're police officers. Oh. They enforce the policy of a, a corporate structure, essentially, is what they do. And mm. as long as we play along with it. You know, and they outnumber us from the standpoint of, you know, not enough people stand up and say no. Not enough people know the real rules to Right. The and, and so then, you know, it's because because most people will be like, yeah, look what happens when you don't pay it in. You know, and, and, you know, instead of standing up and saying, listen, well, none of us are going to do it then. You can't do it to him. You can't do it to me. And yeah, if I everybody have... does that, then the whole thing changes. Yes, exactly. I had friends. We had friends over a few weeks ago and they said, well, it's like the Bud Light to, incident. You're going to have the Bud Light get, thing. Everybody says no. Yes, it's the it. Bud Light thing. They said you're going to have to get your real ID. You're going to have. You're going to have to. And I said, no, I'm not. I don't have to. The, well, you have to. Just like you had to get the jab. Just like you right. had to. Right. Well, you don't have to. No, and, and that's if been you proven. Wait it out and to. hold your ground. Then right. enough people will hopefully wake up, and we won't have to. Anymore. Right. That's what it's people just, forget. Yeah, I, like, I think what, your rights come from God and the universe. Mm -hmm. They do not come from government that tells you you're allowed to have rights. 
Right. You're just allowing them to tell you that you don't have rights or right. you're allowing them to tell you that. And it's usually through force, through threat, through fear that we participate. And then if enough people say, no, we're not going to do this anymore, then what do they do? Well, they do. I think pass all the stuff they want in Washington, D.C. Well, as long as there's no enforcement and we all agree that this is BS, what are they going to do? <coughs> Nothing they can do. But you have to get to that a moment of just that crystallization in your mind that's like, okay, I'm now crossing the Rubicon and I'm not coming back. And there's nothing you do to stop me. And if enough people say that, it's it. It's over. It's over. Overnight. But you so got to get this, to that point. This subject came up um, about paying taxes and crossing the Rubicon, crossing the, the boundaries. So back in the day, if we were traveling, they would say, oh, you're out of town. I'm going to ship it to you and you don't pay taxes because you didn't live in that state. Does anybody else remember all that? It's like we all forgot. Then Amazon came along with shipping and whatever, and they figured out how to charge people tax. So you're charged, I believe you're charged tax for where you live. Yeah, they collect on, it now. On items that you purchase from another state. Right. But you see how that works? They have to have enforcers. And now Amazon's an enforcer. They have Just like your employer man. is an enforcer. They take it out of the check before you even see it. And if so they've got a bunch of henchmen white. running around that follow orders because they want to participate in the big system and play in the casino, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sit at the table. So they do it. Yeah. And so you don't even get to see the money. They just take it. It's the same way that they take taxes out of your paycheck and tell you you're too stupid to invest for yourself for your pension, your retirement. So we're going to set up a 401k and we're going to have social security for you. I don't think anybody on social security feels too secure right now. Oxymoron, right? Social mm -hmm. security. It is. So, I mean, the whole, the whole term conscientious objector, um, yeah. I was talking with somebody about that, about regarding voting. And they yep. were like, I don't want to be responsible for killing children in Hamas or Hamas children in right. Gaza. So mm -hmm. I am a conscientious objector. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they're like, but you could apply that to so many things. Everything. I do not my religion into this system. Against my religion. Between yes. me and God. And this is what God and I have worked out. This is the deal. This is our covenant. You know, this is not. I could, you know, I'm beyond you. I'm not the state is down here. And, you know, it's our thing. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the whole trust thing and law and law of the sea, air and land. But even and... that. Okay. So that is still when it gets into all the, oh, the law and the law of the sea and the air. To me, that's even semantics. You're almost bending the knee and saying like, okay, I found a way to opt out of your system using your system. Right. Because you know what? Yeah. I think they get a big middle finger and get told to pound sand because they're not the boss of me. My right. mother always told me like, it doesn't matter what somebody thinks of you. Don't give them your power. Mm -hmm. Stop, stop, talk, hang up the phone, block the number. They don't exist in your world. And there's a lot of ways to do that. I mean, there are certain instances where, I mean, if they want to, they will, they'll go Waco on you. I mean, there are instances yeah. where that can happen. And I think that's the, why they have to have a few of those events every once in a while to scare to, people into keep everyone in line. Yeah, exactly. You know, they have to have a few of those events. And they're like, see what happens? Wesley Snipes, look what happened to him. You know, look what happened to Erwin Schiff. You know, and, and there you are. And so everybody's like, ah, F it. Yeah, I really don't want to rock the boat. Meanwhile, you just, uh, you know, BlackRock now has $10.5 trillion. Wow. And they're buying all the Bitcoin. The paper Bitcoin. Yeah, and they're going to lock it up so you can't have it. And so, you know, new gold. Crazy. If they control. But then the do we told if they're controlling it? You know, China is telling people that um, that silver is a good asset. And yeah, because it's actually useful. You can do something with it. It has an industrial use and it has medical purposes and medical uses. And so, yeah, I mean might want to look at some silver, you know, as opposed to $23, $400 gold an ounce. You might want to look at maybe a $29 an ounce silver. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I wanted to tell you guys. So I was on, um, I'm a patron of Jenny Moonstone. You can yeah. be too for only $17 a month. 
um, and support an amazing woman who is really giving her heart um, to those in that. In the, she does like live things for everybody in the community. Live readings. I mean, yeah. you know, you can be in the chat and ask her something. She pulled, yeah, give you now, all the so advice. She did this reading for the collective and she said, everybody, uncross your legs, put your feet on the ground. I was barefoot, by the way. Um, <laughs> she said, make sure, you know, you're tuned in, make your question very specific. And so my question was, will silver be over $300 in 30 days? And she got the world card, which is a huge yes and affects everyone. And then she went on to say, like, she goes, okay, I'm having this experience of like, I don't know if somebody likes baking or cooking, but it's like there's a pie and there's enough for everyone, but you have like, there's a process of making the pie, cooking the pie. It's going to get hot. It has to cool down before you yeah. can enjoy the pie. And so right. some people are being frustrated with like, oh, it smells so good and it's hot and it's ready, but you have to let it go through the time of cooling down before you can enjoy the pie. There's a process to the pie. Read the instructions. It says, let's sit for two hours. You know, if you make the pie. And it's like, don't be eating the pie hot because it's not as good. You're like, the pie's not that good. But if it sits, it's like when you make soup. My wife makes soup and, you know, the first night she makes it, I'm like, yeah, it's good. But if it sits for a day, you're like chili. Like if it chili sits for a day in the fridge, yeah. you take it out the next day, I'm like, man, this is really good. Way better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There's, there's a time. You know, mm -hmm. it's a process. And, you know, you rush it and you get all worried about it. Like, oh my gosh, you know, right now, I got to get paid now. I got to get it now. I got to eat my pie now. And it's like, okay, in the case of Bitcoin, there's 21 million. Mm -hmm. Not a big piece of pie. Litecoin, 84 million. You know, there's not that many pieces of pie to go around, you know, given how many people now, are each out there. coin is a pie. And yeah, it's a big slice of pie. It's, it gets, you know, you can have a piece of pie. But the more money that's put into that coin or that pie, that pie gets bigger this way so your slice gets bigger yeah it'd be energy. more valuable it doesn't take you don't have to eat as much of the pie because it's more nutritious it gains in value you know so you just take a little nibble of that pie and it's worth so much more i don't know it's it's just we've got options i mean that's the good mm -hmm. thing now we do have options we do have tools and i mean even if you don't want to go down that road to where it's like okay all this legalese Citizen, non-citizen stuff. Yeah. I don't even know. I mean, there are ways to get out of it. And and you look at the the tools, the economic tools that are now present. When you look at cryptocurrencies, the finite assets of certain good cryptocurrencies, like a Bitcoin, Litecoin, those kinds of things. When you look at those, you see what happens when you have rampant inflation. You see what happens when with gold and silver. And they're, they're right, like the bellwethers right now, canaries in the coal mine, to where... Mm -hmm. Somebody's buying this stuff. And why are they buying it? Why are they buying a rock? You know, why are they buying this thing? Well, because I think some people understand that we're going to have $50 trillion real soon on the books. And then it's going to be a hundred trillion. And it and has it's to be go somewhere. Yeah. And that money, as long as it has purchasing power, it's going to drive the price of your eggs up 10 times. Gasoline. Look at it. Four bucks a gallon now here. Once again. And it's just like, Things really haven't gotten bad. We're not like full fledged out war catastrophe stuff. Man, we'll just wait, and it's just you're just your purchasing power just gets eroded. So you got to put your energy into something that's not that can't. It's erodible. Uh, you know, you can't, unerodible. And I mean, we've got the tools to do that. And you don't want to wake up one day and say, "Well, I had the opportunity to get a hundred dollar Litecoin or eighty five dollars today," you know, and Holy cow, I just got to do something different. Can't keep playing with their poker chips. You keep losing the casino. Oh, what are they talking about? Get your cigars while you can. Get your Tito's while you can. Get all the Tito's you can. Get all, get all the Tito's <clears throat> you can. I mean... Ugh. I, I just can't imagine having blinders on now and thinking, you know, oh, everything's fine. You know, I just go to work and do my thing and yeah, everything's going to work out. No, it's not going to work out. I mean, pensions aren't going to work out. I mean, not when you're printing all this money and creating all this money and that's all they're going to continue to do. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. I don't know. We'll see where it goes.
um, but it does feel like it's going faster and yeah, it's, it's accelerating. I saw a toilet for 160 bucks and I thought, well, maybe I should buy that and have it as a backup because you know, everything's what? going down the porcelain. Yeah. Everything's going down the porcelain. Maybe I want an extra toilet, you know, it's going down the porcelain. You're so funny. You never know. I broke the friggin' lid out here, the one in the bar. You know, I need a backup just in case, you know, somebody gets crazy and, you know, bang Oh my head gosh. When the porcelain. lid breaks on the tank is the worst thing because, like, they need to make replacement. Okay. 3D printing, though. Right. That's, that's a solution. That's, that's it. it. But that's energy. That's the thing. That's where we can take it control is. of energy. If we have the ability, think if you're in Antarctica right now, all right, you need a tool at your little hidden base down mm -hmm. there. What are you going to do? Have a big ship come down, you know, through 80, wave, 80 foot waves of water? No. If you got a 3D printer and you're like, ah, I need this particular bolt, you know, fashioned this way, or I need this particular tool, it'd be nice to have a 3D printer, you know, that you can just, do, 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 you know, make it what? on demand. And imagine, you know, if we were all able to do that with um, all the energy that's out there in the atmosphere. I mean, what a different world that would be. So Cannon is doing his, which I probably nobody from school is watching this, but his end of year um, presentation. Every year they do what's called Faces of History. And it's during that time frame that you're studying. And right now we're doing like modern times or whatever. And so he chose to do Tesla. Or maybe I might have helped him decide. But resource footnote, it's I'm amazing to think about how much Tesla has influenced our current. Like, he basically invented Bluetooth, right. he um, invented the telegraph uh, amplifier or telephone amplifier telegraph. But then this other guy got credit for it because he patented it before him. But then once he got to Westinghouse, he did so many patents for all this, you know, the AC current. And mm -hmm. also, um, basically, I, I, I was thinking of it like the peer-to-peer -peer transaction thing. Um, because when you're using wireless, you're, and he was talking about the energy in the ether and how you're exchanging the energy within the ether, but it's a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. I don't know. It was just a whole thing. I was really enjoying it. Um Think of the infrastructure and, that has to go in to get. I mean, we got rural communities that get, can't get internet, you know. But over the air now, I mean, now you can use satellites. Sense. Now you can yeah. use, you know, wireless over the air. That's what happens in rural areas. That's what happens here. You know, if I didn't have, you know, was fortunate enough to get fiber to the home because the trunk line was running by, and you know, the few houses around here are like, okay, yeah, we'll pay to tap into that. Okay, they did it. But if before that it was okay, where's the nearest silo at? And then you got a wireless company with an antenna. And then you put an antenna up, and it's, you know, as long as there's line of well, sight. But there's you know, things the like helium miners. Right. Um, that you could. Oh, Twitter's trying to kick me out. Um, so, like, for the event, we have a helium miner that's up for auction. Um, you can bid on that helium miner, but that's you another build your own wireless network to where you start communicating. Yeah, you know, with Johnny was equipment. talking about about Roger Veer and somebody sending um, Bitcoin over radio waves. Cam radio um, waves. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it can all be done. I mean, think about it. You're, turn, you're driving down the road, and we used to have analog radios. I mean, you'd turn it on, and then it's capturing it over like an AM radio, you know. You listen to AM radio, you're listening to Coast to Coast AM at night, you know, out of a tower in Chicago or something, WLS. And then you hear the, <laughs> that's because the lightning striking, you know, and the thunder and all this, because it's going over the air, you know, hundreds of miles, you know, to pick up a signal over the air. I mean, it's a magical thing, this frequency. And that's all it is. You're just tuning into a frequency on the radio dial, and then you're picking up on this particular frequency. I mean, they're all out there. They're all out there everywhere. And I mean, all this energy is flowing around everywhere, but well, let's, let's control that. Let's put meters on it. Let's make sure we got wires. So it's contained and, you know, and we can charge for all this stuff and all this infrastructure and it's so centralized. I mean, and then you think, well, isn't there a better way to do this? Isn't there a more decentralized way to do things? And I think that's, that's what frees us mm -hmm. decentralizing and having, you know, it's really comes down to energy. You know, if we can tap into that that cheap energy, that free energy that's all around us, then I think. But we are the energy. Absolutely, at the base level, we're the ones. Yeah, that we are the energy. That. We are the IP. We are the you know, and that's where the ideas. The ideas. You know, and the, yeah. Yes. The love yeah. frequency. If we can all get on that love frequency, I think we're good. <laughs> really. Oh, Lord. 
who was telling me? Oh, it was my hippie cow boyfriend. Um, he said he was doing this deep dive on the CIA and said vampires melt away in front of you. <laughs> that they they part of their strategy was the whole '60s movement with LSD and all that because they were trying to hijack it. like MK, yeah, hijack it and MK Ultra, a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Um, like, how did the there's some great Grateful Dead guy? And he had like 10 million hits of LSD or something. Was it Jerry Garcia? No, it was, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name now. But anyway, some other guy. But apparently he was like CIA and they were trying to influence a generation. This is, go look, at, go look on Netflix right now, the octopus thing. You seen that? My teacher, oh. the octopus? No, it's uh, no, no, no. It's it's uh, the, the name of the movie. I can't think of the name of it. It's on Netflix, and it's uh, it's like this whole octopus file to where they go, the the software, the uh, what's it called? Somebody in the chat, help me. Pry, pre, oh, man. oh man, I can't even think about it. But anyway, you know, there's this piece of software that got sold and you know hijacked, and you know, then it leads to this big rabbit hole of all these connections, and you've got all these see assets, you know, involved in everything. They're like running everything. And then Whitey Bulger. I just saw this the other day. That was the person I was trying to think of before. You know, the big mafia guy out of Boston. You know, he's working for the FBI. I mean, and it's like they're controlling all these different things, you know. And then they let things go. And, you know, that guy got murdered. Oh, well, you know, he's still working for us. And it's just this thing has gotten so big that they're controlling everything. You know, you know, it is, you know, the whole Mena, Arkansas thing. You know, you're American. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at all this stuff and it's like they're running the whole thing. That's the other thing that busted this week was the Boys Town story, um, <sighs> which I guess Charles Manson was at Bar- Boys Town. Somebody told me. Um, but there are these people that were going to testify about how they were at this boys home and they were offered drugs and all this kind of stuff. And then they would take them to these sex parties in D.C., and then mm-hmm. Boys Town ended up being, they also had um, women there, or girls there, not women, I'm sorry, children, yeah, young gr- female children there that they started, and they would sell them to the parties. And they would do these, like, satanic rituals where they would, like... It all comes down to that, ultimately. When you yes. dig into it, and you go into this whole really satanic stuff, I mean, it all goes back down this rabbit hole thing of, yeah, the dark thing yeah so there's yeah. a link for that the franklin project oh yeah the franklin cover-up you know out of what nebraska yes old... that's the boys town thing yeah yeah it's all tied in and then you start looking at other connections and then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it's like all these people are you know and then you it's it's just so huge and i mean they may have different interests in mind but they all you know work Together at some level, you know, because yeah, protecting the whole network of things, you know. It's... Well, and that's what when I saw um, what's his name Johnson vote with Biden and the Dems and talking about saving the democracy and all this bullshit today, I was like, oh, you're compromised. I mean, seriously, what are we saving? What are uh, really? What is there? I mean, you know, this whole system. We want to save the system. No, because like, the system ain't working. Well, not for us. Mm-mm. But like I said, you know, you look at the jobs numbers and it's always the biggest jobs created are freaking government jobs. It's like, what do we need more government for? And what are they doing for us that we can't do for ourselves? Well, and that's the thing. Like, if you go back and look, like World War II never ended. Then they moved the scientists here. No, right, because that's they don't need Mangala because they have operation you. behind the scenes that controls everything at this point. Mm-hmm. Media pharmaceuticals, war machine, everything. Mm-hmm. President doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because he comes and goes every four to eight years, you know, and it's like, hey, just shut up and get rich. Just shut up. You know, you don't want to end up JFK. All right. Just, mm-hmm. just shut up, you know, and that's basically what happens. It's like, hey, we're, we're going to be here after you. So you might as well just uh, play ball and, uh, you know, have a nice life. That's where you're at. Crazy. That's all this money. That's all this fake yeah. money. And Jim Bright, Zionist. So that's where when they're talking about all this, like, are they putting things in place 
or will there be things put in place? But then once again, rules that they don't have to apply to, but where like you can't. So when they killed JFK, there's a letter and I've shared it on previous episodes where he was saying a Rumsfeld wrote him a letter right before he was killed. And it says, you're making people very uncomfortable by asking them to identify if they are part of the Zionist movement um, or not. And then magically JFK is knocked off. So if they're talking about that again with uh, Speaker Johnson saying like, oh, you're going to have to prove that you're an American. Well, if you're going to have to denounce or deny your Israel passport and they are, you know. And why, why do you care about being a citizen citizens? of another country? I mean, you know, that's that's totally like that's the antithesis of America. I mean, we come here, oh, we're a big melting pot. You know, we take on this new ideal, you know, this, this, and then, ah, oh, yeah, but I want to be a citizen over here too. Why? What's the point in that? Right. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to the average American. But then when you start uncovering it and you realize, well, why are y'all doing this? Why are y'all part of something that's, you know, doesn't seem to be in the interests of, you know, what we think, you know, when we pledge allegiance to the flag, you know? You guys are operating under, you know, a whole different set of rules that we don't really understand here. And um, that's that's not, you know, you know, I, you know people are going to get sick of it. People are waking up. Um, where does it go, I guess? You know? It's so much more than the currency. So the currency is, when I think about it, so the currency is a tool or weaponization against we the people. But 1913 and the Fed the organization, the seats at the table are the enemies. So it's one is not without the other, but one's a tool and one is the person sh pointing the tool in your direction, I should say. Oh my gosh, my battery's going to die. Oh no, Lord. I thought I tried. I got, I got some gifts. I want to shout out Daddy O, he sent. He got some stuff for the bar. It says Beer Garten. That's you know, awesome. Beer Garten, you know, German Beer Garten. Pretty close to English. And then uh, we've also got uh, cryptocurrency oh, knowledge. You. you know, a little time with all kinds of crypto knowledge. That's it's really cool. cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, so you can look at that. And then, oh, baby, the, the crown jewel. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. I know. you got all kinds of Sasquatch and Cliff even talking. Look, Sasquatches in the middle of this video. Just like, oh, look, Sasquatches. I'm like, what? There's something this week. So this is so weird. So... Okay, we went to a car party. They do these weird car party things when they launch a new car or whatever. And Charlie's friends with all these car guys. So he's like, please come to my car party. So we're like, oh, okay, shit. we went. Um, I realized all this free stuff was in here. Thank you, 84 million. It's awesome. All right, I'll be back. Um, right here on the floor. Oh, that's okay. I, I just want to share the... Um, I want to share the... Hold on, I'm going to share my picture of me and the Sasquatch if I can find it. Oh, that's a beautiful picture. It's funny, but then so we went to this party, and there that's their like mascot of their dealership or whatever is a Sasquatch. Oh, that chicken's so cool! I love it. I know. It looks like a what am I thinking of? I don't like know. a delicate chicken or something. Huh? Mm -hmm. Join or die. Oh, I love that. Yes, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. All kinds of things. Um, All the things. Oh my gosh. Shout out to 84million.com. And, you know, I got a new flag too. One of, I don't know how many you made, but it was the. Big, there it is. Oh, oh that's oh, awesome. Yeah. That's, well, that's great. Hanging up in the bar, you know, the big, you know. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Get all your gear. You can pay with Litecoin like I did. 84million.com. Get all your Litecoin, Bitcoin, Dogecoin gear, all that stuff. That's awesome. Anyway, here is me and the Sasquatch at the car party. And then my, so I posted this on social media and my director of our, um, cause Charlie and I went to a little party. So there's us all dressed up and then me and the Sasquatch. So my director of our homeschool co-op calls me and she's like, does your husband have a Sasquatch outfit? Because this week, is sightings week for Sasquatch. I've never heard this before, ever. 
I, I haven't even heard about that. There's not I, a week I'm of, I was like, where it. are you hearing this? Like every day. And then she said that she, so it's part of like their curriculum, which I'm really, I'm confused about it a little bit, but she said it's, uh, it's 24 week science. It's really crazy. I got a stuffed animal that makes Yeti sounds and I'm going to pop it in the window while the kids are doing science. I'm like. Have you oh. heard the Sasquatch sounds though? You know, the howls that they do? No, because I have not met a Sasquatch. Oh, but next week, this, see, this is a future Bruce past moment right here because next week I'm going to be standing next to Lisa and it's going to look very similar <laughs> to that in the picture. You are not a Sasquatch. Future Bruce past. Anyway. Um, I'm telling you the whole national park thing, the more I think about it, the more I dwell on it, there's something to this whole national park thing. Um, what's going on there? I mean, yeah, you got Sasquatch tie in tie-ins and that kind of stuff, but it's, um, there are things hidden there, mostly underground, um, that are occurring that, um, that's a big secret that needs to be revealed. Just say that. Hmm. Yeah. That's wild. So you guys heard it here. I did not catch where Uncle Cliff is, is that in one of his recordings from I only got through one yeah, of the it was actually. um it was not the most recent one, it was the one before. It was this okay. week. It, it, he was driving down the where road. Where the motorcycle and, goes by him? Well, I heard that, but you know, I think it was in that video to where he said, Oh, look, Sasquatches or something like that. And I'm like, and he didn't say anything more. And I'm like, where did that come from? He just like spilled it out, you know. He's like predicting his own data you know it's like spilling it out he just like wow. dropped it right when he was driving mm -hmm. curious he's what he saw he's leaking truth like he's leaking uh, it doesn't even know it like oj's bronco leaks fiery leaks <laughs> fiery leaking orange juice yep orenthal orenthal wasn't that his name orenthal jones he's a disgusting human <sighs> disgusting all right i think that's about it for me yeah. i can't wait to see everybody um th that is able to travel and make it westwood your brave brave soul i love you to death and thank you for coming and supporting well I'm i'll have a i'll have a partner you. with me i'll have somebody that for moral support coming along I'm so and uh, a strong warrior for the truth and um i don't know what else you want to call it uh, i would pick her as a sidekick any day whew, to be honest yeah. Yeah, definitely a powerful Do not mess around with that girl. Mm -mm. Um, once again, you guys, please consider picking up a shirt. Um, that money will go to benefit the family that we're raising money for. Mighty Miller's um, in treatment in Tennessee. He has had a recent setback, um, an infection, so he had to go a little for a little bit. But he is mostly doing well. We're hoping for his continued um, health and wellness and peace for their family. Um, so that's a great way. You get a little something, they get a little something, buy a shirt for 20 bucks. Everybody can do that. If you want to make a donation, you can go to the link in the description that says um, Evite or Eventbrite. Eventbrite. I think it's Eventbrite. Um, and you're able to either buy a ticket and then donate the ticket, or you can just make a donation of any dollar amount um, there. Um, and Where then are the QR codes? People can just donate. Well, Send they can the also show. go to, I can, I'm creating a QR code for the auction where you can, um, you just shoot that. There's a, um, I'll post it on Twitter. There's a like instruction sheet on how you can go ahead and register for the auction. Now it will go live on Saturday at 4 p.m. Central, and then it will close by, I think I said 6 or 6.30. Okay. Um, it says on, on the website. So that's the time frame that it will be open and live, and then we'll work out shipping. If you guys aren't at the event, I, I'll contact you, and we can uh, I'll figure out shipping for you for any of your items, and um, we'll get those to you. So. And then you said something about Friday night happy hour. I know I was probably pulling. Yes. Tonight. Friday pulling night happy hour will be at the Edmund rail yard. Oh, so right. it's like, it's a big, it used to be a lumber yard and they mm -hmm. made it into, it has like multiple restaurants and then it has this one big bar with a big outdoor area. Oh. And we'll be right there waiting for the light coin train to come rolling down oh, the tracks. My. So we'll be out back. Um, 
And if you're in, if the you show up, town, if you show if you up, if you got a wallet, and if you don't have a wallet, I'll help you download a wallet and show you how to secure that with your seed phrase, and then I'll send you some Litecoin. Get a piece of the pie. Get your piece of the Litecoin pie. Yes. Show up and get big hugs from Westwood. <laughs> Sasquatch size hugs from Westwood. You can take some uh, Sasquatch pictures. Yes, and we'll take pictures and just hang out with fam and friends and talk about yeah. freedom and whatever you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you all. Thanks for joining. Oh, wait. I've got something. Did you like Coin Watch from coinvigilante.com? Yes. Nana will have a Bitcoin watch that she donated on the uh, auction. So you can check that out too. All right, guys. Take care. Uh, thanks again for joining us in the live chat. You guys are amazing. Uh, love you all. I love you. And I'm really thankful for the information that you bring to us each week. So um, please give us a like and share the video, make a comment. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'm going to start asking everybody to please. What time subscribe. we do it? Hey, next Friday, what time is the happy hour going to be? Do we think um, Friday, we can kind of do it whenever we want. Five ish. We can do five ish central. Yeah. yeah. It's just all going to be. We'll see how it goes. All about the fam. So, yeah. All right. We'll see you guys then. Thanks. Bye.